Animal and I would love to wish you a happy President's Day. On this episode, we're going to be checking out the Journal of Major George Washington way before he was anything great. I'm Christian Murray, this is Animal, and this is the Founders Club. Now, before we can even understand this journal, we have to understand George Washington at this time period and the climate that surrounded him. George Washington joined the British military and became a major due to his family status. This was pretty common in the British military. He was full of ambition. He wanted to do something great. He wanted to be something great. He had something to prove. Now, this is very different than the George Washington we're used to. The more humble George Washington. Now, during this time period, he was begging and begging and begging the governor of Virginia for an assignment, something he could do. And on October 31st, 1753, Major George Washington had gotten his wish. You see, at this time period, the Ohio area was rich and vast. It was critical to the expansion of both Britain and France. The French started to build forts on the land that the British claimed as their own. Finally, the British had enough and decided to intervene by delivering a letter to the French demanding that they remove themselves from British land. Now, who was going to deliver this letter? Oh, 21-year-old Major George Washington and the Virginia Militia. He was eager, he was excited, and he couldn't just deliver a letter. Due to George Washington being, well, George Washington, he couldn't just accomplish this mission. He had to do more. This was his chance to lead men into the wilderness, to test his limits and see what he could do. This was really his chance. And this is where our story begins. George Washington began by hiring French and Native American interpreters to form a small company. He wanted to work on his diplomatic skills, which he did. On his adventure, he worked with certain Native Americans to make sure that they stayed on the English side of the conflict and they also talked to French deserters. The Mingo, Shawnee, and Delawares who lived in the Ohio Valley were allies of the Iroquois Confederacy. Washington went to Lodgetown where he met with Tana Cherison, a Native American leader known as the Half King to the English. He wanted the Half King to be the spokesperson for the Iroquois Confederacy. The half-king had double-crossed the French where the French angrily said, I am not afraid of flies or mosquitoes, for Indians are such as those. Washington presented gifts to the half-king and became allies with him. The half-king then followed Washington. It also helped that the half-king already hated the French. Now this alliance would get Washington in trouble months later, but we'll get into that in a whole other video. Throughout his adventure, Washington observed and studied the forts that the French had built. He discovered new forts that the French were in the process of building, and he even studied random spots that would be great to construct new British forts for a variety of reasons. Remember, this is beyond the scope of his original assignment. The journey was filled with rain and snow. The weather and the cold took a toll on Washington and his men, but Washington refused to let this be his limit. After working on his diplomacy and facing the hard weather, Washington finally arrived in Fort Vinigo on December 4th. The French were using a trading outpost that they kicked out a trader from and were fortifying his buildings into a fort. French Captain Philippe Thomas Joincaire greeted Washington accordingly, but he wouldn't accept his letter. He insisted that Washington bring it to his superior, which wasn't at this fort. The French senior commander was at Fort Le Bouff. Joincaire also refused to accept the Half King's belt, which was a gift, and directed him to Fort Le Bouff as well. This was the captain that had called the Indians flies. Washington had finally made it to Fort Le Bouff, but the commander did not want to take the letter, saying that Washington should take it to the governor of Quebec. Washington was livid. He was not having this and would not leave until he reviewed the letter. And so he took the letter. While he was waiting for a reply, he took inventory of the troops, armaments, defenses, and communications of the French fort. Washington wanted to leave as soon as possible because he was convinced that the French were preparing for something. He was given a reply from the French commander which seemed pretty aggressive. The Native Americans were seduced by the French's party and alcohol, and Washington just really wanted to leave. On his way back, Washington was ambushed by French Indians. He had captured one that had shot at him from 15 feet away, missing him entirely. That night, he let the guy go. His journey continued to get worse as he fell into freezing water. After almost freezing to death, he wrote in his journal that his friend's fingers and his toes were completely frozen. After getting dry and changed, his journey continued to get worse whenever he met with 20 warriors, and they said they found seven bodies that had been scalped. 
Finally, on January 16, 1754, Washington arrived back in Williamsburg and gave the governor the letter and his account of his journey. The governor was so impressed with Washington's journal and wanted the average person to know the threat that lies west that he had Washington's journal published. This made George Washington a household name. Washington was promoted to lieutenant colonel in order to raise men to prepare for a mission. We'll talk about that mission in another video, but let's focus on this experience. We can see in the last paragraph of his journal that he really wanted to prove himself and learn from this experience. Here he writes, I hope it will be sufficient to satisfy your honor with my proceedings, for that was my aim in undertaking the journey and chief study throughout the prosecution of it. With the hope of doing it, I, with infinite pleasure, subscribe myself. Your honor's most obedient and very humble servant, George Washington. This was a tough journey. It was wet, freezing, and dangerous. But it did provide Washington with his first victory. And it set him apart gave him a name. But we'll see what he does with his name in the future. Well, that's all for this video. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you like the channel, please hit that subscribe button. And I actually want to give an announcement right now. This announcement being, once we hit 100 subscribers, we're going to be going through our first war series. That's going to be the Seven Years War, or the French and Indian War. So stay tuned for that. And remember, history is a story that needs to be told. So tell it.